Today I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting demonstration of this flamingo painted in a pop art style. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. For today's project, I knew I was going to need a lot of really smooth edges, so I wanted to use a canvas that had a very smooth surface. For this one, I went with a Frederick's Blue Label Ultra Smooth Canvas. Just for transparency, I am sponsored by Frederick's. I only use their canvases to start with, so that doesn't really affect which canvases I choose for my videos. And I don't want you guys to think I'm hiding things from you. All of the supplies that I use for this one are listed below in the video description. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, I have the one hour real-time version of this video and actually 20 minutes of it is me showing you how I design pop artwork in Photoshop and how easy it is for you to do that yourself so that is available for you over at Photoshop not Photoshop patreon if you head over there you can watch that now if you are unfamiliar with patreon you get access to all of my one to two hour long longer tutorials than what you see here on YouTube every along with all of my past patreon videos there are over a hundred there so that's a lot of videos for four bucks now let's move on to this tutorial I started by painting my canvas white even though it's a pre primed canvas so it was already technically white the finish would be very different than my my white my titanium white paint so what would have happened if I hadn't have painted that and I needed to cover something else up with white they would have been two different colors so I painted the entire thing solid white I actually put two coats to make sure I had a really nice solid even coverage this also let my final finish be the same as the rest of the paint on the piece next I am making different shades of teal by mixing phthalo blue phthalo green, a, some white, and a little bit of black, Mars black. Not too much of the black, just enough to give me a, a slightly grayish tint so that it's not too bright. But phthalo blue, phthalo green, titanium white, and a little bit of black are the colors that I use. And it's just varying how much white that I use in each batch. I want different shades, all the same color, just different values for each one. So I'm turning the canvas to create these circles. I found different things. Some were stencils. One was a CD to create perfect circles here. And I used water soluble graphite so that I could work out any graphite lines I might have. And I just turn the canvas as I move my brush to create that nice even circle. And I am using a filbert for this, a Taclum bristled filbert, and that's the rounded tip brush. If you use a brush with a straight flat edge, it's really hard to get those circles to be nice and smooth. I find it to be much easier with a filbert. And each of these circles, I put two layers on so that I had a really nice even even coverage and I pretty much do that throughout this entire piece I'll put two coats of whatever color that I'm using let it dry in between coats so that it's very very nice very solid and if you are a little bit hesitant about trying something with a pop art style I did show you guys over on patreon exactly how step by step I design these in Photoshop using filters to make it really easy to see where you might want lights and darks in different colors and this is really fun because you can change colors completely from your reference photo on my reference photo this guy had a little bit more of an orangey tint than what I wanted so I changed that to more of a cool pink but I could have painted him purple or blue or anything it works really well for this style to play with different colors so here with this teal color I've mixed a lot more white more white than any of the other colors in order to get it that light so my next step is to paint in just a solid base pink for the flamingo now I'm not trying to paint around all of the different shapes in the dark areas I'm going to paint in I'm just going to paint everything this medium pink and then I will layer darker and lighter colors on top of that I found it to be easier than trying to paint each one individually more as a paint by number type thing and really a lot of this is a very paint by number style I'm just layering color on top of color which you would not do in paint by number so it is a fairly easy way to go really nice if you're doing pet portraits or something like that it gives you an option for your clients that you can charge a little bit less for because this is a very fast way to paint and it creates a really nice finish something that a lot of people want to hang on their walls so it's a really fun thing to learn how to do again just filling everything in and I'm still using my Taclon bristled filbert brush I want to make sure that my edges are very very crisp very clean that's important now I will come through and outline things so I can clean stuff more later then but ideally all of your edges as you're painting in all of these shapes you want them to be very clean you don't want to have a lot of blending so I need to make sure in between each of these colors that I dry it completely before I go on with my next layer otherwise you start blending wet into wet and you start getting more of a natural look which is not what we're going for here 
And I wanna try to get rid of my brush strokes as much as possible, and that's one of the reasons that I'm creating two layers. So one reason is that it makes it very solid. The other is that I get rid of those brush strokes on that second layer. So now I'm just going to start blocking in some of the details, the eyes, just to kind of get an idea of where everything is going to go. And I've used a white charcoal pencil to draw in my main shapes. You can slightly see the white there. You can also use tracing and transfer paper. If you trace or draw everything out on tracing paper, you can use the transfer paper to transfer the image over onto your canvas and keep everything nice and clean. And I do have a video showing you how to use that. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. Now here, this brush that I'm using, it's a Round Simply Simmons. You can really see my brush strokes here. I'll put another coat to get rid of that later. But a better choice for me there would have been a smaller filbert. The filberts are just better at not ending up with brush strokes. They're, more often than not, when I'm painting, if I'm painting a background that I really need to be blended smooth, you'll usually see me using a filbert. It is so much easier to minimize your brush strokes with a ra those brushes with the rounded tip and then a tacklon bristled brush. It's just a nice balance of how stiff or soft that brush is. So getting rid of brush strokes, those are much easier. But here, I went with that Simply Simmons round brush just so that I could get these smaller details. But now that I'm painting over that, you can see how much more solid that is. So it isn't always an issue of your paint. When I know a lot of people will complain they don't like Liquitex Basics because they're more translucent. I actually like that about the paint. That's one of the reasons I, I love them. But with here, where I'm trying to go more opaque, I'm mixing white in with these anyway, which will make it more opaque. But the, the issues of brush strokes here doesn't boil down so much to the paint as it does the brush that I'm using and how much pressure I'm, I'm adding to that brush. If you're mixing water in with it, that's going to make it even thinner. I don't have much, I've had very little water mixed in with mine just so that it flows smoothly. And I've got it, my brush is loaded pretty well. I've got a lot of paint on there because I need to have my edges very clean. If you ha are trying to be really careful and barely use any paint, you're going to have these bumpy edges because there's just not enough uh, paint on that brush to really give, give you the smoothness that you're looking for here. Now the color that I'm putting here, this I'm going to come back inside of it later and darken up areas. But see how I'm just layering it. I found it to be easier when I paint this style just to paint a whole clump. Go darker and then within that dark area that I'm doing here, I'll come back and darken up smaller areas. But it seems to be easier than just trying to paint this color of pink where I want this color of pink to go. Which will make more sense as we get going a little bit further on this. Now when I do the Photoshop mock-ups where I, I put a filter over it just to see what it would look like on different photos. I don't worry about getting my shapes exact. I just want to get an idea of where my lights and darks go and that's about the extent of it. I don't copy every detail, everything. I don't think it matters for this this style of painting. I just kind of need to go for clothes where lights and darks go. So you can see what my finished painting is going to look like. You can see there where I will come on top of that with many darker, oh, quite a few areas with darker colors. And when you first start this, your first few layers, you'll look at it and go, oh, this looks terrible. I should just start over. Don't. Just keep layering and building until it starts to look good. But these first few layers, like at this stage, it looks like something that I painted with my feet. It doesn't look like something that's going to turn into what it actually turns into. Just keep painting. So here I'm taking the same colors I've already used and I've added a lot of white to it. So here's my lightest pink color adding that in a few areas, still sticking with that filbert brush, that Taclon Bristle filbert. Just working the brush so that it goes in the direction of the feathers. It doesn't have to be as exact as when you normally hear me talk about when I'm working in realism, making sure that the feathers are going in the right direction. I just need to go for close with this style. It does not need to be nearly as exact as when working in realism. So now I've mixed a darker color and here I didn't realize when I started painting the darker pink that's under or well lighter than this shade underneath it, it was still a little bit wet. And so what started happening is I made these brush strokes, I was blending wet into wet and the, those two colors were just mixing together, which is not what I want here. I want the very harsh difference between each color. So I had to stop, dry it. I just used a hair dryer, dried it and then went on to my next layer. And you can see as I add each darker section, I use less and less. I'm not trying to cover everything that I did with the medium pinks. I need some of that to show through. That's very important. The 
once I get these in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to dry it completely, and then I'm going to mix a slightly darker color. And with this pink that I'm using, it's a combination of red with a little bit of brown. It's kind of a, a I think it's a red oxide. A little bit of that mixed with some white. And as I get deeper, I'll add a little bit of black in with that. Got some yellow. Now with this yellow, I've mixed a little bit of white so that it's opaque enough that it'll show up well over the pinks. And then into the shadowed areas, I'm just back to those pink tones again. I've added a bit of violet into that, deep violet with my, my yellow. That's how I got that deeper orange color. And here's another area where you can really see how basic it is versus how much detail I'll end up adding. When you start layering this in, it's so normal for you to feel like, oh, this isn't looking good. I should try again. But again, go back and look over at the finished painting where I'll come back through with the blues or, well, really the teals and the dip darker shades. It will get to the end, that end stage, but it's going to be kind of ugly to start with. That's normal. Don't let that scare you or discourage you in any way. And this is really nice because you can do things like there was one stage towards the end of the painting where I thought, okay, I'm going to add some extra black detail on the back of the neck and some over here in a couple of other areas. And when I backed away, I realized that looks terrible. I just painted another pink tone over it. It didn't really matter. You can't hurt this. You can just keep painting back and forth until it looks how you want. The big thing is to make sure that your paint dries in between layers so that you don't blend wet into wet. And I'm holding my brush to the side. This is still that tackle on bristled filbert. I'm holding it to the side and just not adding as much pressure to the brush, and that's giving me a nicer line. So I didn't have to switch over to the Simply Simmons for that area of the beak. And even on the beak, see how I started with that darker yellow, and now I just came on top with a little bit of the lighter. I'm just going to keep building and building and building until I like how the end result looks. Because even when you make a filter, you use Photoshop or whatever, and you make a filter that gives you an idea of what you want your painting to look like, you're going to make so many adjustments based on what will make yours look better. That's just a guideline. It's not the same as having a reference photo that you're copying a bit more exact, like I typically would work. Here, it's just a, a guideline. I can be creative with mine. Decide where I think something might look better if I put more detail, less detail. And when you see me use the hair dryer, this is a question I'm often asked, how, what my heat setting is and how far away it is. I always have mine on high heat and high air coming out, but the 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 hair, hair dryer never gets closer than about a foot from the canvas. In the video, it looks like I've got it right on top of the paint. I don't. You don't want it that close because if it overheats the acrylic paints, it can start cause it to start to bubble up. This is essentially plastic, so we don't want to overheat that. So it is always at least a foot away from the canvas. So high heat and high air pressure is fine. Just don't put it right up against the canvas. So now I am taking my black paint. Now I did switch. This one is actually a flat angled brush so that I get nice crisp lines and I'm outlining this. Now I'm not going to outline it even all the way through. If you look at the finished painting, you can really see areas where the line is going to be thicker and thinner. This gives it a better look. I think if you outline it with an even outline all the way around, it doesn't really look right. It doesn't fit with the style of paint. It looks better if you take areas and make the line thicker and some of that outline much thinner. And then I'll also take this black and add a little bit into the wings or the feathers on the back. And it makes such a difference in making him just pop and it stands out so much from that background. And then because it's me, I have to include bees because in my world, bees and flamingos go together. So with the bees, it was pretty much the same thing. I just blocked in general colors. I had reference photos that I sort of looked at. I didn't copy them very close at all. It was just to give me an idea of where does the black and yellow go because I don't remember. And that was about the extent of that because I'm not going for super realistic at all. I want you to look at it and go th know that it's a bee, but that's about it. I don't need it to look like a realistic bee. So I'm starting with this violet color that is going to completely get covered up. I just want to kind of block in my general shape for where my bees are going to go. Let it dry. Went on top with some yellow. And I let some of this purple show through too. I didn't have to cover it completely. It's okay if a little shows. Now I'm going to use some of that darker purple, pull that back in to create some of these shadows. And the bees are the same thing. I'm letting it dry completely in between switching colors. Switch to my Simply Simmons brush, that round, just to get some details. Painted in the hint of some legs. 
And there are my wings. I outlined those much more heavily than I would if I was going for something realistic. Because just like the flamingo, they would be, I want them kind of outlined with a bit of black too. This style is so fun to paint if you're doing gifts for people, or again, if you just want another type of style that you can offer for pet portraits on your website, if you do take commissions. I've got this painting hung on my own wall because it matches with my decor so well. You can change all of these colors to really match somebody's home very, very easily. So it, like I was saying before, it's just a style that a lot of people do like, even though it's very, very fast to paint. I had this whole painting done in a single night. I think I may, may have spent an hour or two on it. It really did not take very long. If you are taking commissions and you do paint pet portraits, one of the things that's so nice about this style, and it's kind of the same with Impressionism, you don't need a very good photo. Whereas if we're working with something that's going to be photorealistic, we need a really good reference photo to work off of so we can see the details, we want good lighting, all of that. When you work with this style, this reference photo wasn't amazing. It was okay, but it wasn't great. It wasn't one that I might, I would likely use for something super realistic, but I was able to work and still create a really cool painting out of it. And that is something that you'll have happen a lot when you're taking pet portrait commissions. People will provide you with a photo that is just not very good. Here's a way that you can say, okay, I can't paint this in my normal style. It's not going to come out that great, but here's a style that I can work from for that image. So a lot of clients I've found will really like that because they don't always have the ability to get better photos if the pet has passed on or, or anything like that. And this style can be painted for any subject matter. It doesn't just have to be for animals. If I can't have a flamingo come actually live in my apartment with me, I'm just gonna paint them nonstop and hang them all over my walls. There are so many flamingo paintings and drawings on my walls. If I didn't know better, I'd say I was a bit obsessive. Hey, have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Normally, when I'm healthy, there's five. I'm hoping to get back to that sometime soon. It may be a few weeks, though. I'll see you guys later.